Let's imagine that we've been tasked with building out a game, and part of the game involves throwing dice, and we need to make sure that every dice throw is accurate and it falls within the correct range. Now, if I come down here, there is a method that is very helpful inside of Ruby called between. So what between does is it takes in a value, so say it is the value five, and you can say, is five between one and 10. And if I run this, then this is going to return true because five does fall within the values of one and 10. Now, if I say, does 15 fall within these values, this is gonna return false just like it should because it's not in between those values. Now, this by itself though, will not take care of our needs because remember, we have two die and so right here we have a question on is this a valid dice and then and it passes in four and two in this case six and six five and one and then here it passes in some values that it shouldn't pass this should be return false there's no such thing as a die of eight or nine or seven so these items and these dot uh, dice tosses should all be false and these ones should be true so essentially we're building out a validation method now because we're dealing with multiple die we can't just use between just by itself. Now we can leverage between, but we're going to have to build a different method. And I thought a good way of doing this would actually be not only to create a method such as valid dice, and then you know pass in uh, D1 and D2, but I think a elegant way of being able to implement this type of validation would be to open up the array class. So I'm gonna say class array, and inside of it, I'm gonna add a new method. So we know that the integer class has between. Let's pass in and create a method here called all between. This is going to take a top and bottom. So essentially it's going to create a range. And then from here, we can just iterate over it. So I'm gonna say each do, and inside of the block, we're gonna have access to this block variable E. And then I'm just gonna say return false, unless E dot between top and bottom. So essentially what this is doing is we're leveraging between, but we're extending its functionality so that it can be used on multiple elements. So we're iterating over and we're still calling between just like we did below when I showed you how it worked. We take one element and then we check to see if it fits within a range. So we're able to leverage the cool between functionality, but by adding it to the array class and iterating over the entire collection, now it can apply to an entire set of elements. That's kind of a cool, helpful kind of thing. And all it has to do is be passed to a, a range. So let's test this out. So I'm going to now say one, 10, and five, just to show you that it doesn't need just two elements, it could be anything. So I could say all between one and 20. This should return true for all cases. And there you go, yes, so this all worked. Now what happens though, if I were to say all between one and let's say six? Now if I run this, this is gonna return false. So this is exactly the behavior that we're wanting. So now inside of our valid dice method, let me delete this data. So inside of valid dice, what I'm going to do is just pass in as an array, those two elements. So the dice one and dice two, we're gonna pass that in. And now we can call the method. So I can say all between, and in this case, one and six, and then I'm gonna use the ternary operator and say true and false. If you've never used the ternary operator, this is exactly the same as saying something like this. If, let me just copy this for the, so you don't have to watch me type it all out. 
So it's the same as saying this. If this is true, then return true, else return false, and it takes up five lines of code. So many times if you see something that is a very basic conditional, where if it, it can just be boiled down to a single condition and then it returns a very basic return statement, such as true or false, using the ternary operator is a great way of doing it. So we have two Boolean checks. The first checks to see inside of the array class if all of the items, in this case the two dice, are between one and six. And then if that's true, it simply returns true. And if it's false, it returns false. So this way we are sticking with the practice of returning true or false here. Uh, we also could eventually refactor all between so that it returns true. Or in fact, you know, let's just do that just because it's a better practice. Okay, so and if you're wondering why I did that, it's because whenever you have a question mark, this should return a true or false value. And I know there are some times where I'll build something out and I will have, if I know it's going to return something that is true, in other words, it returns an array that Ruby is going to count as true, then sometimes I'll just let that slide through. But honestly, it's a better practice to do it this way, where it literally returns either true or false, not just a truthy or a falsy value. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. It's really more focused on uh, kind of a best practice in Ruby. So now, just to give you an idea of that, let's pass in 1 and 20 to valid dice and, oh, and actually, valid dice, it takes arguments just like this. So 1 and 20, and this should return false. And it does, and now if I switch this up, so it's one and six, so these are both valid, now it returns true. So this is working perfectly, and notice how our system up here is also, instead of just returning the array, which technically would have been true, it's returning true or false, which just makes it a little bit of a cleaner implementation. So now let me clear this up. And let's run our tests. So our spec, March 25th, running that. Both examples are passing. So that is how we can build a validator method in Ruby.